Good morning, everyone. It's a privilege to be here, and I thank God for the opportunity. So I'm a health systems researcher. I look at health systems, how they work, and how they're governed, and I use complexity science to make sense of what's going on. And there's one thing I'm certain of: for health systems to do what we expect them to, deliver quality care to all who need it, affordably, acceptably, and appropriately. The way we understand how they're governed has to change, and there's something that I've noticed in my research over and over again in Ghana. There's a common complaint: management is weak, leadership is lacking, and this particular criticism is often reserved for the local level, where policy implementation unfolds. The solution has often been to train. So through the Ministry of Health, we ran management and leadership trainings for district health managers. This is a picture from one of our workshops, and we found that after learning these new practices, managers were able to get their clinic teams to increase the numbers of mothers giving birth in clinic and reduce the numbers of stillbirths. So this was incredibly impressive. But within months, managers had reverted back to their old practices, and health outcomes began to fall again. So, what accounts for this systemic inertia? Now, most of our governance frameworks are focused on regulating the system. That's to say, they're about the rules. But what if we began thinking of governing from within the system itself? That's to say, from the relationships. So, instead of starting from prescriptions of idealized good governance versus bad governance. What if we took the time to understand the existing relationships in a system and use that as the basis for our interventions? Now I know that may sound basic, but let me share some examples from my work to explain what I mean. Now often there's a mismatch between the rules and the relationships. So let's take the example of poor staff attitude, a common problem which affects quality of care. Now, when we worked with staff to diagnose the issue, they reasoned as follows: Staff attitude is poor because staff lack good customer care. This is because they have inadequate knowledge of customer care, because they've not been trained in customer care. Therefore, the solution is to provide customer care training. So, in this case, the rules state that regulating the system through trainings can increase levels of staff knowledge, which can then be applied to improving the system. Yet, when we looked at the same issue from the managerial perspective, the response was more like this: Any time your leader tells you something, she has a plan. Only one person can lead; others follow faithfully. Yours is to do as you are told; the rest, she will manage. So this tells us that in this case, the relationships are based on hierarchy and authority. So the problem here is not one of needing more skills or more knowledge, but rather of nurturing better quality relationships at the front line. So it means that trainings in this case become ineffective because managers are trained at the personal level, but then they're sent back into the same old bureaucratic structures. New ways of learning and practice eventually get squeezed out. Inertia. So co complexity science tells us that a complex system is made up of many interacting components, and it's what happens within these interactions, so within the relationships, which gives rise to the overall character of the system. Complexity science helps us to link the macro structures, so the rules, which are visible and can be measured, link these to the micro incentives, so things like understandings, motivations, values, and experiences, which are often hiding within relationships. It exposes the ongoing tensions that exist between the formal and the informal, and between people and procedures. Now, rules are simple. We know them when we see them, but rules alone don't govern people. Relationships are dynamic and complex, and they take time to understand. And by focusing on health system relationships rather than health system rules, my research is opening up a new window on alternative remedies to governance. It helps us to see governance as a practice rather than governance as an instrument. These relationships filter whether policies at the front line work or don't work. These relationships are what keep the health system moving. 
And in fact, when we fed back these findings to government, the comment that we got from one senior official was, if we keep running these trainings with their limited impact, then in fact we're causing financial loss to the state. It means that we can count the cost of how we govern and make the economic argument for why our traditional approaches to governance no longer make sense. In the context of resource constraints, that's pretty compelling. And so, in a future of increasing uncertainties, African health systems face a huge crunch, like this overcrowded antenatal clinic. Health systems will have to deliver more and better quality services to increasing populations with changing demographics, and will have to staff and finance it all. Now, just listen to all that we've heard in the past two days. No African government is banking its future development on 19th century technologies or 19th century infrastructures. So why should we continue using 19th century governance models? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kwame.